Recently, This Is America and the World traveled to the Republic of Benin in West Africa. It's a peaceful, safe, French-speaking country with a population of about 10 million people. Benin is in a strategic location right on the ocean and bordered by Nigeria, Niger, Burkina Faso, and Togo. Once a major port for the West African slave trade, Benin has gone through many political identities over the years and is now a democracy. However, it's a poor country with a third of the population living in poverty. Goods within Benin and neighboring countries are moved by truck and the country lacks the proper roads to make commerce efficient. Much of Africa's future, and particularly Benin's future, hinges on the importance of a developed infrastructure. <laughs> we heard about a man, a native son of Benin, who's been working to transform the country and the region. His name is Samuel Dussault, and he's the founder and chairman of the Petrolin Group, an oil and natural gas exploration company. He's the promoter of a huge infrastructure undertaking, which he calls the Backbone Project. On this program, you'll meet Mr. Dussault, learn about his Backbone Project, and the major economic and social impact it could bring to Benin, the neighboring countries, and Africa as a whole. This is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust and the F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. ANA, Japan's largest airline with an extensive network throughout Asia. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology sharing tomorrow. The Republic of Kazakhstan, a rich history and a future of development and growth. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing, and distribution services. In Benin, I had the chance to talk with Samuel Dussault about the Backbone Project and infrastructure in the country. Do you have a sense of mission here in Benin, in Africa? First, I am a native from Benin, and for many years, I work abroad in many African countries as expert in oil. Myself, I am petroleum engineer, and on top of that, I have training on economics and finance in oil business. Then I start as a civil servant from 74 to 91. And then I decide to create my company, own company, which is Petrolin. We start in UK in 92, in Geneva in 93. And since 93, our main office is in Geneva up to now. You know that on May 94, Mandela was elected. Two months after, I signed a big partnership contract with Engine, who used to be the largest, one of the largest oil company in South Africa. We created two years after a Pan-African company called Energy Africa. Mm -hmm. Then I went to South Africa and tell Engine, you are very clever in producing finished product through coal and things like that. But in exploration, I, have to, I want to partner with you and take you outside your country to many African countries to make exploration of oil. Is the reason why I was the strategic partner in 94 with Engine, and we create two years later Energy Africa, who cover now more than 12 African countries in exploration and production. Today we are in South Africa, as I mentioned. We are one of the larger producers of gas mm. in Nigeria. We supply all the population because it's part also of our vision. Everything you do, 
should help the population. You believe very strongly in giving back, part of your philosophy, and in giving back to Benin and the countries in the area, you have something called the Backbone Project. Yes. Backbone, why did you choose that name? Backbone because it's about infrastructure and our main component is railway. Because infrastructure like railway will help a lot because our road in Africa is very difficult to manage. Mm -hmm. Even if you have good roads, sometimes people stop you to ask for many things, including uh, police and uh, all those people who have to stop to check who you are in your lorry. In Benin, commerce moves by trucks, which are often, as the drivers say, blocked because they're overweight. The trucks remain in place waiting along the road for days and as long as a month for negotiations to unblock them and get them on the way north to neighboring countries or south to the capital city. Do you have family? Uh, now, I, I, you know, I spent a month outside. I have not been uh, to, to see A mama. month? Yes. A month away from this? Uh, on, on this trip? Or, yeah. uh, or on this trip? Yes, on this trip. My word, do you have uh, children? I have children. Oui, yeah. How old? Yes. How many? Yeah, Two. Two. How old are they? Le age. Five years and uh, seven years. Oh, they need you. Mais ils ont besoin de toi. Oui. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but you're away for a long time. With railway, you don't have this problem. Mm -hmm. You don't have this problem. And also, Africa is a mining country and railway is more adapted for transport of mineral and things like that. Mm -hmm. Is the reason why we call backbone because all our project is based on the railway. And on top of that, we have component of backbone project, which is a petroleum and mineral port mm -hmm. at a cost, because Benin is a natural port of interland country like Niger, Burkina Faso, even the north of uh, Nigeria. Then we create also dry port on the terminal of the railway, which is uh, Paraku. Then we have all this uh, structure based on railway first and some additional uh, investments. The Backbone Project plans to develop a new mineral seaport. Mr. Dussault, joined by one of his colleagues, showed us the proposed site for the new seaport at Seme. This would be a new port, huh? A new petroleum, mineral, and commercial port. So, Backbone Project is seaport, yes. railway, yes. dry port, yes. airport. Airport. All that are a kind of terminal for the railway. Because even the airport, which is close to Lagos, we have at least 15, 50 million potential battles. Huh? Lagos next door yeah, yeah, in course, Nigeria. Huh? My name is Paul. Uh, Hi, from Paul. From Dennis. Dennis. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So what is your role here? Okay, actually, uh, actually I'm uh, the, the major manager of the project of against erosion in Kutubi. I also manage the expert, the expert from our company in Canada, Roche, Groupe Conseil Engineering. We are making studies for Mr. Esu uh -huh. about his new uh, seaport uh, project. And uh, in maybe two or three weeks, we will produce, present to Mr. Esu uh, a study with results of data, bathymetry, bathymetric, uh, topographic, and we will present three or four options uh -huh. or what can be done mm -hmm. here, uh, right here on that side. So, uh, there is an old railroad. Yes. Then a new railroad from Paraku into, into 
Niger, huh? Yes, and to Niger. And the uh, the uh, the um, Paraku area will be one of the dry ports. So what is a dry port? Now, the dry port is a kind of uh, extension of the function of deep water port because when the deep water port is congestion is good to transport to a dry port some of the containers so that many boats can come with some freight and container is the reason why our dry port is at the north terminal of the railway we left the coastal city of Cotonou to go up north to the city of Paraku. The trip was 11 hours. We saw remnants of the old railroad, which needs upgrading for sure. The roads were often in poor condition and congested with cargo trucks. However, along the way, we met warm and friendly people, saw various pieces of Benin's history and rich culture, and were able to take in Benin's natural beauty. Once we arrived in Paracu, it was stunning to see the construction of a huge dry port well underway. This may be one of several dry ports in the Backbone Project, moving goods coming from and going to neighboring countries. We had the chance to talk to two managers at the Paracu dry port. So we have uh, Benin, uh, Nigeria, Niger? Yes. Uh, Burkina Tafaso. Faso. Burkina Faso. Uh, did I leave Mali. anyone out? Mali. Mali, yes. And Chad. And Chad, Chad. Yes. in the area. Yes. <laughs> Le port de Cotonou. Uh, so those goods, uh, we come from uh, Europe, uh, America, or let's say the Western Asia, the Western uh, 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 countries, uh, to drop at uh, uh, Cotonou Harbour. But very soon we can see that you know Cotonou Harbour will be very narrow to contain uh, all those goods. That's why there's necessity or there's, there's a need to construct this dry port, okay, just to uh, to take the goods from Cotonou Harbour to here and, and then dispatch all those goods to those uh, uh, neighboring countries. What will that mean to Benin? Ah no. <laughs> L'importance uh, est inestimable. This project is very, very important for our country because it will boost the local economy and also it will, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, yield uh, some employment and uh, some jobs for people. Like here, uh, you can see Chinese inter uh, uh, entre entre entrepreneurs here. And uh, uh, just uh, uh, with them, there are some uh, Benin people who are working with them. So, uh, and a part of that also, uh, Benin will be looked at uh, uh, as, a, uh, let's say, a mirror of the sub-region. So important to Benin and also to West Africa, huh? Total Africa. Total Africa. Total. All. Total Africa. All Africa. Grand, grand, grand project structural. So, so, so great huge project uh, for, for, for the country uh, and uh, also, for, for also Africa. How many people are working on the site now? Then, the local workers are 200 and the Chinese are 20. He is the manager of the whole workers, either uh, Chinese or uh, local workers here. Thank you so very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Where, where are we now in the timing? Today, the railway belongs 50-50 to Benin and Niger. And when we initially, in 2010, asked to have the railway to manage it, we received an agreement from Benin. But Benin government have to go and explain to the co-holder Niger, so that Niger also agree to less to less petroleum manage the railway. Mm -hmm. Finally, the two owner Benin and Niger decide to launch a tender, and we win the tender. Then we are officially the winner. We receive 
official letter signed by the two countries that they have decided after looking to our file that we have we are the uh, we say in French adju adjudicateur, mm -hmm. the one who win the tender. Now, from this date where we receive the letter nominating us as concessionaire, we try several times, we were invited several times by the two countries to come to sign the convention of railway. Unfortunately, many things happen between the two countries and we we get a delay mm. on signing this convention. But officially, we are the concessionaire of the railway. Sometimes disputes come because there is no enough explanation to people what is happening. And in Africa, and most of the time, the decision makers are not sufficiently informed on the reality of the project. Challenge, big challenge. Big challenge, but it will be solved through transparency. Are you optimistic? Very optimistic. Is it your financing of the project? Up to now, we have finance from the money we took from our exploration money to finance the preliminary work we are doing on the Backbone Project. The proposed Backbone Project would transform Benin economically and socially. Interested parties offer supporting comments on various facets of the project. So do we need a new port here? We nous avons besoin de nouveau port. So we do need an overport, a second port in Cotonou, because the one we have, the old one, is congestioned, too congestioned. And the port of Seme is a mineral port, and it will be uh, promote the development of the area. It will, be, it will boost the development of the economy all over the region. How does your company fit into the backbone project. We carry out studies on this project of railway construction. And at the same time, we work on the dry port of Paracu. We signed a convention with a company that is called Peak Network to identify a, any uh, technical problems or to solve any technical problem. So railroad is the key? Yes, it's key. It's a very big project, and the project that we need to have. For instance, in the Pindorsal, if they made an airport in the, between Nigeria and Benin, which is, may not be far from here, about 10 kilometers from Port Novo, if they have another one here, it will serve Nigeria and Benin. So this project is a very, very important for us and it can bring to us a great development for our people. You have a reputation as being incredibly generous, that you have set up a foundation that is doing work in six, 10, 12 different countries in the area. Tell us a little bit about the other projects that you get involved with and using some of your financing and some of your money in a whole different way, giving back to the people? For us, our strategy and our vision is that you cannot do business without sharing with others. Each time we do business in the country, we have our foundation called Fondation Espace Afrique, created in Geneva, with the Geneva audit system, who put some of our profit to invest in population needs. We have a, a boarding school where all the villagers' uh, children are taken care of.
from the beginning of the year until the end of the year, on boarding school where everything is free for them. We have today 300 children in Gabon, you know, where we have investment. We have also action in many other countries in Africa, in medical centers, in hospital, and so on. How about this area that we're in right now? Tell me about that, and maybe you'll show us around. Before we came here and developed the place, this area was considered very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Today, everything is clean and safe. Sievra is the name of a ready-and-waiting building complex financed by Samuel Dassault's foundation. Currently, the center hosts an occasional conference and a medical clinic that operates in conjunction with Mercy Ship visits. Madame Claudine Prudencio explains. This center is a clinic. This center is a clinic. We soignons the villagers here. We treat here all the villagers, poor villagers who have nobody to help them, to finance them, to treat their diseases, and be it uh, uh, any disease. And uh, we mainly work with a boat that is called Mercy Ship boat that comes from Geneva. How often does that happen? Once a year? Twice a year? No, parfois, Mercy Ship. Mercy Ship can come and stay, remain here for six months in a year. And is it scheduled to come again? They will be back in January 2015. The main idea here is to have a central base of our Geneva of our Geneva Foundation Espace Afrique to develop things all over Africa. And here is a kind of brain where from time to time we can organize international conference with people coming from everywhere in the world. And we want to partner with many universities who are used to organize e-training, distance training, so that we will help our people to know better, to know more about what can help them mm. to develop their own life. We make appeal to those who like to help Africa to join us and to develop here what can be promoter, promoted all over Africa. Mm. So go back 10 years, 15 years. What gave you the idea? the dream, the vision, and now the reality of this idea of making Benin some kind of uh, economic hub. How did that come about? I see that the geographical position of Benin with more than 700 kilometer border with Nigeria. Nigeria and Benin are in ECOWAS area and out of the 300 million people on this area, Nigeria alone is 170 million people. Mm. Then when you have a large border with this country, you can try to see what can be done to use this strategic geographical position. Mm -hmm. Is how we conceive and develop the backbone project based on transport because infrastructure is key for the development of all this area. A new mineral seaport at Semi, improved railway from Cotonou to Paracou, an extended railroad from Paracou into Niger, several dry ports, and a new airport next door to Nigeria all add up to a multi billion dollar investment. However, there is no doubt that this massive infrastructure backbone project would make the strategically located Benin a major economic hub in Africa.
information about This Is America and the World and online video for all of our programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net. And now you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. This Is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust, and the F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President, the League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries, ANA, Japan's largest airline with an extensive network throughout Asia, Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. The Republic of Kazakhstan, a rich history and a future of development and growth. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings, and Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing, and distribution services. 